just in the old folks garage today, friends, and came across this old fashioned uh, steel mouse trap. And uh, I remember years ago in a house that we lived in, we had a problem with mice. I think over a few weeks, we caught about 15 or 16 mice in a little mouse trap, not on like this, although slightly more modern. Mouse traps aren't all that nice. Mice aren't that nice either, but you all know, I'm sure, how a mouse trap works. You uh, put the the cheese or the peanut butter or the chocolate, whatever it is, on the little plate and you flip the, the spring over and it's very, very uh, finely set, very delicate. And of course, whenever the mouse comes, if you've set the trap right, hopefully, uh, not hopefully for the mouse, but hopefully for us, when the mouse is a pest, you've got uh, the mouse trapped, probably a broken neck or something like that, and that's the end of the mouse. The mouse trap is basically the same principle as a snare. Traps the animal. It gets baited, the animal gets trapped, it gets ensnared, it can't get away, and ultimately it will perish. Now, whenever Paul was writing to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 2, he spoke in verse number 26 about those who have been taken in the snare of the devil. He uses that phrase, the snare of the devil. And we live in a world where many people are bound, many people are ensnared, many people have been taken captive. They're bound maybe by addiction, maybe by bitterness, maybe by pride, maybe by false religion. There are many things in this world that can enslave us many things in this world that can bind us. And of course, just like the cheese is to the mouse or the chocolate is to the mouse, the things that ultimately are used to ensnare us initially appear attractive, just as a fisherman will bait his hook with something that appeals to a certain species of fish. So it is with the devil, the God of this world. He knows the things that are attractive to us. And those things that are attractive and we feel that they will satisfy us and maybe even set us free are very often the things that bind us. You all know, I'm sure, the story, their historical account of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. And Satan was more subtle than any beast of the field. The serpent came along, tempted Adam and tempted Eve, and they looked at the tree. They saw that the fruit was pleasant to the eyes. It was a tree to be desired, to make one wise. And as soon as they, as soon as they took of that forbidden fruit, all of a sudden they were bound by fear. They were bound by guilt. They were bound by hopelessness. Their relationship with God was severed and they found themselves in the snare of the devil. Maybe in your life you've been bound and fettered, maybe by addiction, maybe by guilt, shame, fear, maybe by false religion maybe by lust, whatever it might be, something perhaps today in your life has bound you. And Paul speaks here about the snare of the devil, and it's a very real snare, but he also instructs Timothy how people can be delivered out of the snare of the devil. Verse 24, the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient. Those are things that a Christian pastor, minister, or evangelist, or teacher ought to be. He must not strive. He must be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. Paul is speaking to Timothy, showing him that the remedy for the snare of the devil is the word of God delivered in the right manner with the power of the Holy Spirit, preaching the word, delivering the word, administering the word. And whenever somebody hears the word and they acknowledge the truth of the word of God, and the response that they make to that is they repent of their sins, then there can be deliverance. Wherever there is honest and real repentance, there can also be deliverance. What is repentance? Repentance unto life is a saving grace, whereby a sinner, out of a true sense of his sin, an apprehension of the mercy of God, doth with grief and hatred for his sin, 
dost turn from it unto God with full purpose of and endeavour after new obedience. Repentance is a change of mind that results in a change of heart, that results in a change of will, that results in a change of direction. It's turning from sin unto God and endeavouring as God gives grace to live a life of obedience. Maybe there are things in your life that you need to confess and repent of before God according to his word that you might be delivered out of the snare of the devil. Repentance is a gift, it's a grace and I trust today that if you're bound and fettered and ensnared that the Lord will enable you to repent of your sins and trust in Christ and enter into a new experience of walking with the Lord. May God bless you. Thank you for joining us today.